The Answer, San Diego. Streaming now on smart speakers and radio.com. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. It's time to get educated on your Second Amendment rights. Welcome to two full hours of Gun Owners Radio. Your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Germisi, and Michael Schwartz, will teach you about firearms, self-defense, and the laws that affect your rights to keep and bear arms. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with questions to learn how to become a sponsor of Gun Owners Radio and get involved. Together, we will win. Now here's your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Germisi, and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The Answer. Hey, this segment is sponsored by John Dillon and the Dillon Law Group. If you have legal matters that involves firearms, then you need to call an attorney, John Dillon. If you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you need to know that your guns are California compliant, call our trusted firearms attorney, John Dillon. As John Dillon specializes in California gun laws, call him at 760-642-7150, or you can visit his website at dillonlawgp.com. Hey, to tune in to YouTube live stream at youtube.com slash gun owners radio. Please hit the like button and subscribe button and make sure you tell all your friends. And cover your ass week is less than a month away. So join fun, um, join the fun and um, register the class before it's sold out. So learn with the best online or in a live training. Links to register at the gun owners radio.com website. Hey Dave, what's your uh, what's your shirt of the week here? L.A. Ammo. L.A.X. Ammo. Yeah, I love this shirt. This is cool. It's a nice shirt, right? L.A.X. Ammo. They sell uh, really just nothing but ammunition. They sell some accessories, but they're specialty. And you said ammunition. they have ammo. They have ammo every time I go in there. Isn't that amazing? it? Ebbs and flows. You know, they might not have. Yeah. You know, where are they located? Uh, they're in Kearney Mesa, right off the one sixty three. Off uh, Mercury, I think. Off Mercury. Yep. Yep. So that L.A.X. Is. Ammo. That's the. Shirt of the week. So can they get that ammo of that shotgun that I sent you the video on? <laughs> they might. They may be able to. Did you see that? That was amazing. Was that an amazing? Where did you find that? Uh, somebody sent it to me, you know, and I went, holy mackerel. Another you know, California legal shotgun. Did you see it? I did. You want one? And I got one, but. Not know. like that. Not like that. <laughs> Not quite like that. So, Not quite like that. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Hi Melissa. Mike. How you doing? Hey, Dave. So what do we got going today? All kinds of cool stuff. We have special guests. We're going to talk to uh, one of our uh, old buddies, uh, Morgan Ballas. And oh, then, good. Uh, we have Justin from uh, Rifle Supply up in Orange County. He's going to call in. And uh, the lovely Melissa, you're going to do a uh, um, uh, gear, review? gear review. Gear review on Tack Rig with Tim Silva. Yeah, we're going to talk all about that. And what course, are you doing there, Hollywood? Oh, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the latest weapon of the left against uh, Americans. Isn't that a baseball bat? Yeah, it's much much better than a baseball bat. So I heard a story on the way in that's that's probably going to start. You're, you're probably going to hear about. It. It's actually not really posted many places right now. Um, it, it's on Reddit and then Reno May. If you guys are out there listening and you want to follow somebody really interesting on YouTube when you're not listening to us, look for Reno May. He puts on a fantastic uh, uh, YouTube channel. Very very good uh, as far as uh, you know information and resources. Mendocino County, which is way up north, mm -hmm. north of San Francisco, it's a f relatively rural county, and it's generally considered to be pro-Second Amendment. Everybody has a gun. I mean, it's truly rural. It's beautiful up there. It's beautiful. Um, but again, everybody generally considers that to be, you know, pro-Second Amendment and, you know, uh, you know this good old fat, you know, none of this California anti-gun stuff. Guy got pulled over um, for speeding. He was doing 68 and a 65. Mm. Deputy pulled him over, um, saw a box of ammo, asked if he had any guns. First mistake, the guy let him search the car. Um, the deputy found he has an AK-74, which if you don't know what an AK-74 is, it's 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 an AK-47, but they upgraded it in 1974. It looks a little bit, little bit different. Now there's a bunch of gun experts out there that are gonna that are listening to the radio saying it's not just that it's not just, but that's that's basically what it is. Yeah. So the AK-74 rifle, he had a fin on the pistol grip, okay, so that it's no longer a pistol grip. So that's one of the ways to make it compliant in California is if you, if it doesn't have a pistol grip, you can't get your thumb around the pistol grip, then it's not a pistol grip. So he had a, a fin, what you know what they call a fin on 
on his AK. Uh, deputy told him that, that it was too flimsy and it wasn't acceptable and that he was never going to get his gun back. Oh. Took his rifle, sent it to the DA, and the DA is basically saying, all right, if you just if you just give it up, if you just say, hey, you're never getting your – it was a, it was a Sega or Saga, which is a fairly rare – uh, AR, you're not going to get that in. I'm sorry, AK, you're not going to get that in California today. If you just give it up, then we'll pretend this never happened. So this guy doesn't have the money to to fight it. Mm. And I know everybody out there, you know. Th- th- so there's a number of things happening. First off, I'm sure everybody's shocked to hear that this happened in California. Shocked, totally. shocked. But um, you know, this is one of those bear traps. People say, "Well, gee, I'm not going to comply." You know, I'm not going to go comply and I'm not going to get caught. Well, this this guy was doing 68 and a 65. Everybody listening to me right now has done 68 and a 65. Everybody. Not me. And everybody, well, then I just wouldn't have, uh, you know, I would fight it. Well, okay, with what money? You know, this is a six-figure case. Six Easy. figures. Easy. Um, at least, right? And people say, well, gee, Mike, you run San Diego County Gun Owners. How come you're not filing the lawsuit? Well, we are. We're actually plaintiffs in a lawsuit against this very thing. But what, shouldn't he? But just what if he had belonged to U.S. Law Shield? It, it, it would have it, it would have helped, but you know? it wouldn't have. It wouldn't it have helped. The, it wouldn't have been the full answer. <clears throat> well, possibly, yeah. possibly. I, just, I, I think you're absolutely right. You I know, just it, thought that up. I mean, because that's one another. There's a perfect reason. U.S. Law Shield, right? To join yeah. the, a group like that. Absolutely right. But this guy basically made the decision. He lost his glass. He, I don't know what he had on there. Some optic worth hundreds. They wouldn't. They wouldn't even give him the optic off the off the AK. Are they going to crush it? Uh, I don't know whether they're just going to end up in deputy so and so's personal yeah. collection. That's is my guess. Gonna, yeah, and I mean, if he fights this, well, if he fights it, then they have to hang on to it. Yeah, and but the thing is, how many people? Well, gee, um, you know, these rural counties are pro Second Amendment. You know, back the blue. You know, my deputy sheriff would never. You know, I got this buddy who's a cop, and he'd never do that. You know, I'm not saying don't black back the blue. Um, I'm not anti-cop, but what I'm saying is, if you're relying on, you know, the benevolence of of a, of a police officer in the hopes that he's not going to, uh, you know, mess up the law or enforce the law, that that's not the the strategy. We're so not going to win. That so way. let me be the devil's advocate. If you looked at this situation from a police officer's point of view. Did he do anything illegal in the state of California? No. Um, in fact, if I were the police officer, I would recognize that this person, uh, number one, uh, had no criminal record. Number two, uh, was have, you know, he, had a, uh, he was legal to have a firearm. And number three, uh, he was actually he had a compliant part on the firearm. It's not the deputy's decision right. to say, hey, uh, you know, I think this thing is, is illegal. I think it's flimsy. You know, I've decided that your compliance part is is flimsy and gotcha. and and screw up this guy's entire life. That's the potential. Screw up this guy's entire life. It's you know that's not his job. His job is to prevent crime mm-hmm. and to you know draw you know chalk outlines on the sidewalk and investigate crime. That's right. You know not to ruin some guy's life because he has some personal. So uh, you know. So you guys as uh, so you guys are gonna go after. Well, him. I don't know. We're not sure what's gonna happen. It sounds like the guy just said, "Hey, I I can't I don't want to drag my parents into this." I guess his he was still living at, he still lives with his his parents' house or he mm-hmm. was in transition or something like that. So he he made a point of saying, "I don't want to drag my parents into this. I don't want I don't have the money to defend this. I don't know what else to do." Right. So he basically gave up his his firearm. And that that's well, that's hope- the other thing is that's the new tactic by the way is mm-hmm. is make you give up your exactly. firearm. Exactly. And hopefully somebody'll step up with him because you know, it's the police are like any other um group of professionals you know and there's good ones and bad ones you know he ran into a bad one unfortunately and what's even further is the da should have known and and i i suspect does know but it's just you know an anti-gun person or whatever and um you know something like u.s law shield or one of those at least is is helpful because I, I always recommend people whether you carry or not i mean if you go, if you own guns have something because, well, because a lot happens. of people think you should only have u.s law shield if you carry and well, here's a prime example where that's not true. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good point. Different ones cover different things, so right. you'd have to check and see what your, your purpose is. But it's, at least it gives you the opportunity maybe of not letting these people steal your property. But you're right. It's in somebody's private collection. All right, we're going to take a quick break. This is Gun Owners Radio on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I've been watching you during the show, and let's just say I can tell you haven't uh, haven't become a member yet. 
commercial break isn't even long enough for me to list all the benefits and reasons you absolutely should become a member. So just go to stcgo.org and join. Like go right now, join. Get some! <laughs> so my wife of 25 years just told me that she didn't love me anymore. I didn't say that. I said you couldn't have another gun. Same thing. New Year's Day, it's freaking suck. Action. Hmm. That's what that does. Oh. <laughs> it's you again. I'm glad to see that you uh, stayed this far. I mean, you already came this far. I might as well stay for the end of the show. And at the end of the show, make sure that you click that link. That one of those links down there below. I'm glad you stayed. The answer. All right. Hey, we are very proud to partner with the National Concealed Carry Association as a 10-ring partner. NCCA exists to serve the Second Amendment community by providing a nationwide network of 2A advocates. Offer elite self-defense and concealed carry training from the nation's top instructors and provide rock-bottom prices on the best selection of gear and accessories. You can learn more about them at National Concealed Carry association.com all right mike who you got calling in we have one of my best buddies uh great guy a scholar a uh a fine judge of scotch a gentleman and uh a fantastic shooter morgan ballas from defensive tactics and firearms uh morgan are you there yeah i'm here thank you so much for for having me on um i know we're about to get started i just want to say your last little monologue about you know the benevolence of officers and hoping i'm praying on that was spot on 100 <laughs> percent. yeah well you know um that well thank you i appreciate it. what other thoughts do you have about that you were if you're listening in what do you think about that um i i it, it completely aligned to to everything that you guys discussed that we want to have this hope and this vision that officers or sheriffs or elected officials you know they take an oath to protect and defend the, the Constitution, but the truth is, is those are individual interpretations. And beyond that, the, the frontline officers, at the end of the day, they're people. They're people with their own faults. They're people with their own biases. The same cop that you know took that firearm from that gentleman on that day might not do it the next day because he's just having a better day. Period. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many factors that play in where you you have to rely on yourself in order to avoid those situations or have those resources in place um, if you fall victim to those things. So for those listening, Morgan uh, runs, uh, he does a bunch of stuff, but where, where, where we know him best, of course, he's also a, a board member for San Diego County Gun Owners, um, but defensive tactics and firearms are fantastic instructors when it comes to firearms in San Diego, and, and they're close enough to Riverside that that's an easy drive too. Uh, the thing that really impresses me about you, Morgan, and, and your your uh, your company is how detailed you guys get and how educated you are on all these laws and regulations. Um, and uh, it's very, very impressive. There's, you know, you talk to 
a lot of gun owners, I'm not going to single anybody out. They're, they're great instructors out there. They're very, very knowledgeable. But they're, they're, sometimes you get bad information from people you don't think should, should have bad information. And they give you the you know, inaccurate information or kind of these blanket statements don't really apply. You guys do a really good job of, of getting to you know, the real meat of the, of the law and exactly what it says and the spirit of the law and the letter of the law and the difference. Uh, tell everybody why, why that was important to you when, when uh, coming up with curriculum for uh, DTF. Yeah, when, when I started, I was actually still active duty in the Marines in, in 2014, and I, I myself was seeking classes, and I would go to classes and where I thought someone would, would or should know something, specifically when I was getting training from people that were current or prime law enforcement, they were given legal advice, either A, that was, was not sound advice, or two was strictly from an officer's perspective, where given you know the scenario, their answer would have worked for them, but it didn't work for me as as a civilian self defender because I don't have the same background, knowledge, and experience that they do. Hmm. So when we founded DTF, um, that's what we wanted to focus on, and our motto is "Learn the laws, win the fight." And you know, beyond myself, I've just surrounded myself with people that are much smarter. Uh, than me uh, specifically when it comes to the laws of self-defense. And one of them is this nice young man by the name of John Dillon, <laughs> who is uh, not only one of our instructors, but he actually helps us write and, more importantly, update our curriculum. So what you're getting now isn't the same that it was last year or four years ago. Um, we're constantly updating it. Another one of our instructors, Derek Davis, um, he's a, an assistant deputy. I forget what they call him in Arizona. Essentially, he, he's, a, he's a prosecutor. He's part of the DA's office in, in Arizona. So for us, it's really unique to go, get both the defense and the prosecution side when we're creating our curriculum and working with students. Yeah, and you, you've, and you're, and another instructor you didn't mention. You by, by the way, DTF has the uh, uh, has the distinction of having two board members working for the same company. Um, you are a board member for San Diego, and then instructor Shane is a board member for Riverside County Gun Owners. Um, like I said, you guys yeah. fall, you guys are up in Fallbrook, so you're close enough to Riverside, you know, to pull people easily from San Diego and Riverside. Um, but you have expanded what you do. Um, you're you're not just doing instruction anymore, but you're doing all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, church and school safety. Talk a little bit about that. How did that happen? Yeah, well, because I have such an amazing team, and specifically, truly because of instructor Shane, he, he's more or less running DTF now. Um, I, uh, about three or four years ago, started getting into consulting, specifically doing emergency ma- management consulting with schools, but we also work with faith-based organizations, and just so many opportunities have, have been made available to, full to me, um, where now I, I actually travel and train law enforcement across the United States. Um, we started a nonprofit that helps schools get money for school safety uh, um, protocols and, and um, features. It's been a crazy ride. It's, it's just been absolutely amazing. So when you train, you say you train law enforcement, what do you train them to do? What, uh, what's the training? My primary focus is, first of all, is active shooter. So we're training them specifically for active shooter response. But we're using the empirical data and evidence to help them adapt or even adopt appropriate um, tactics and then also helping them to understand how responding to, for example, a um, school active shooter event, given the evidence that we have, that's going to be much different than responding to other mass murder incidents. So my San Bernardino shooter is going to be much different than the attacker that's targeting a K-12 facility. How, so like we're helping them to understand how to adopt What's one significant way that they're different? Or what's a, what's, what is a, uh, what's something that is, uh, you know, a uh, common in a, in a school shooting that maybe isn't common in some other kind of, you know, mass, mass uh, murder? Specifically, it's the, the individual themselves. So overwhelmingly, we're talking, you know, 90 if not higher percentile are conducted by current or prior students. And because of the age of those students, their access to firearms and their access to train with their firearms prior to the attack is extremely limited, if if in most cases not even available. Mm. Um, When we look at the resolution of the event, well over 50% of all K-12 active shooter events end um, because someone on site actively resists. 
and more than three-fourths end before outside law enforcement even arrives. So that suggests that the will of the attacker to stay in the fight isn't there. Um, high, high percentages of stoppages are malfunctioned, so they're not proficient with their firearms. Hmm. And all of these, to me, um, should empower both responding officers and potential victims um, that the options available, specifically the option to resist or counter the attack, is, is a very legitimate option. We have a phenomenal opportunity to end this fight very quickly. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, you listen to the anti-gun groups, uh, you know, they, if, if anyone, you know, if there's a, if someone has a gun within, you know, a mile of a school, I mean, the, the, what they consider a quote unquote school shooting is so broad, so ridiculous because they're, they're attempting to use those numbers to uh, further a political agenda. They're not really interested in solving a problem. Um, but yep. what, what you and I or what most normal people would consider uh, a shooting at a school, uh, you actually explain, I heard, saw you on a interview on the news once and you explained that uh, you, you had a term you said it was high emotional but low probability what was the term you used do you remember what i'm talking yeah, about so th- yeah absolutely so the you know one of the arguments specifically against training school stakeholders is that this is never going to happen that it's so unlikely um it's a statistical anomaly and and it's it's true what they're saying statistically extremely rare events but they are very high consequences. So they're low frequency, high consequences. Mm, and that's what it was. The, the, the clearest way I can tell you this is since 2000, more kids have been killed in our schools due to active shooter events than all natural um, disasters combined. Say that and one more time. Say that, that one more time. Actually, repeat that one more time so that people let, – let, I yeah. want that to sink in a little bit. So more children have been killed in our schools since the since the year 2000 from active shooter events than all natural disasters combined. Wow. So what is that Across indicative of? What does that what does that mean? What do we what do we take from that? That means we can't hide our heads in the sand and that we have a responsibility to prepare our stakeholders even though it's a low probability for this incident to happen. And, and when I take on training at a school, although the conversation is around active shooter, truly what we're talking about is just having a crisis mindset and empowering people, even students, that they can make decisions that they feel are best for their safety. Um, and at the end of the day, that's, that's really what I'm doing. Even though we're talking about an active shooter, we're talking about responding to any crisis that happens in your life. And you don't just work in California. You work in a bunch of different states, right? Yeah. So California is where we do the majority um, of our work, but we, we, I've worked with law enforcement agencies and schools and just different organizations all across um, the United States. Have you noticed a difference in the way, you know, California's attitude when it comes to protecting schools and other states attitude when it comes to protecting schools i think that with other states at least within the past two or three years we've seen some very definitive actions specifically in florida and um, texas you know prevention is a key component we want to not only stop these things before they happen but we want to support students or any individuals that are in a crisis before it reaches that critical point um and unfortunately, in California, um, school threat assessment teams, those, those aren't mandated. Hmm. If we truly want prevention to happen, it starts by creating a team that can help identify those at-risk students and get them support um, before a crisis happens. And, and we're not going to catch everyone. We, it, it is just impossible. It's not going to happen. But there are cases and, and we know and that there's recommendations that are out there from top organizations that say this is an effective measure. Um, so Florida, after they had um, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and then Texas, um, after they had uh, Santa Fe High School and a couple other shootings, um, they both now mandate threat assessment teams um, at schools. And it's, it's a phenomenal resource beyond the discussion we're talking about active shooters, just helping students in crisis. All right. Hey, Morgan, thank you very much, but don't go anywhere. We want you to hang around for the second segment right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The- Do you want gun rights? 
Are you tired of stupid gun laws? Do you want to own the guns the rest of the country gets to own? Me too. So you know what I did? I became a member and I got involved. Join and they will help you figure out which politicians to support, how to get ACCW, and what you can do to be effective. Seriously, it is the most important and most effective $10 you're going to spend all month. Go to sdcgo.org and join. Jump in front of my screen. I didn't see you there. I'm glad you stuck around. There's a lot of good stuff going on Gun Owners Radio right now. Interviews, facts, Second Amendment news. It's a pretty good start to 2021. Just won't go anywhere. So my wife of 25 years just told me that she didn't love me anymore. I didn't say that. I said you couldn't have another gun. Same thing. Get some! <laughs> New Year's diet, it's freaking suck. Action. Hmm. That's what that does. Oh. <laughs> it's you again. I'm glad to see that you uh, stayed this far. I mean, you already came this far, I might as well stay for the end of the show. And at the end of the show, make sure that you click that link. That one of those links down there below. I'm glad you stayed. Folks, welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, The Answer. Law enforcement has a tough job, and a lot of the time, officers need to pay for their own training. So Cover Your Asp is coming up with world-class training, and we set up this scholarship program to help officers get world-class training and also help build relationships with the gun owners community. For $25, you can help a cop get training, and win a Glock. Just go to the website and click on the support button. And if you are in law enforcement, train with John Correa and active self-protection during Cover Your Ask Week for free. Just go to the website and click on the apply button. And the website is, what is the website, Michael? Gunownersradio.com. Very good. So go there, folks. Donate. And Th- click on the button. Thought you got me on that one, didn't you? I really was hoping, but you're <laughs> you're close. related to your cousin or to your nephew, and I know that wasn't going to happen. Well, he, yeah, I don't know. I know, yeah. He got all the he got all the good genes. You're there. good. All right, hey, we got Morgan Bayless back again. Welcome back, Roy Morgan. Morgan from Defensive Tactics and Firearms. We were just talking about uh, uh, school shootings, and Joe had a great question or statement. That was a it was another one of Joe's great statements. How you doing, Morgan? <laughs> But, Joe, how, uh, hey, how you doing, man? I'm good. I was just uh, quiet here, just listening to you in awe. But um, during the uh, the break here, we were just talking, and you know, I was I was saying that it, it's interesting that in our society we mandate gun free zones, which actually attract these people and contribute to the deaths and the things that we have. But we don't mandate any kind of um, training or protection to kind of uh, you know to stop these people or do something that you could do to defend it and cut down on the incidents. Yeah, in, in the schools in California, there was a bill up a couple of years ago that would have mandated um, what we call multi-option response. So the best example I could give you is like a run, hide, fight model. Um, but what happened was they the bill got changed as they always do, and essentially what California said is we're gonna we want to collect data over the next two years on what schools are using so we can determine what's the most appropriate. Um, you know, system to use. So as of right now, schools are not mandated to do any sort of active shooter specific drills. Um, Lockdown drills are actually optional um, or recommended, although the vast majority of schools are doing those. But it's definitely something that for me, it's 
it's a no brainer, but um, it, it's a very political and emotional issue that unfortunately keeps us from, from moving forward in a positive way. Well, and you know, too, Morgan, because, uh, you know, you teach this stuff, but um, like the run, hide, fight, you know, OK, that sounds nice. And that that might be workable in a, a university setting or a high school setting. But like, um, you know, you were at my wife's school and, uh, you know, in an elementary school, you've got little kids there. They can't run. You know, there is no running there. You know, the hiding is more or less futile. It's just it's a matter of luck. And, um, you know, so there there should be other options uh, available to people, I think. I think it's tough. I, I definitely think even at the elementary school level, we should still be empowering students and staff in, in an appropriate manner. Um, but, you know, California has said, look, we're, we're not even going to give school boards the option to decide whether or not they think arming staff or select staff is, is something available to them. Um, so we just have to, you know, it's kind of like the laws. We have to operate with what we're given. Um, so to me, even more so, we need to be training and preparing staff and students. Well, and you, you were talking about, hey, they want to do a study. The reason they don't want to do a study is they've already come to their conclusion, which is get rid of guns. Mm. And people out there probably, you know, who are, who are maybe are skeptical of what I'm saying. Well, gee, Mike, you're, you know, you're biased. You, you, you run a, you know, a pro Second Amendment organization. I would invite you to come to the school uh, uh, meetings that I've been in and the city council meetings where, uh, you know, these anti-gun groups come in and make it perfectly clear that, that really what's going on is that they're trying to ban guns. They're trying to leverage, you know, th- these highly emotional but extremely improbable um, tragedies in order to move their, their political agenda. And, I, again, I would just say, you know, until you've sat in as many city council member or, excuse me, city council meetings and as many school board meetings as I have, you know, well, that's, I have that's to exactly chime, what I see. I have to chime in because this is a statement I make every single time when somebody talks about taking away my guns. I will hand my gun to you, no problem, when you can prove to me in six months that you're taking guns away from the criminals. And until such time as you do that, I will never give up my gun. And they all say the same thing. Oh, well, it, you know, how difficult it would be to take a gun away from a criminal. Yeah, it's easier to take it from you, Dave. Yeah. See, and so <laughs> I, that's my comment, and I don't care who I tell that to, and I tell it to a lot of people because I'm just not going to do it until such time as it makes sense. Yeah. And I wouldn't give it up anyway. So, Morgan, run, hide, fight. T- tell people what run, hide, fight is, and then I want to I want to talk about uh, – tell people what run, f- hide, fight is – Talk about if you think it's uh, effective and and good. And then uh, after we talked about that a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about the movie Run, Hide, Fight. So what is Run, Hide, Fight? Run, Hide, Fight is a multi-option response system to a, you know, a mass murder, an active shooter event. And what that means is that you as an individual have multiple options available to you. You get to select what option you think is best for your safety. Um, And obviously that option is based off of very limited information. And it's a fluid system, meaning you can transition from running to fighting to hiding at at any point. Uh, This system was created by DHS. Uh, and it's, I, I'm, I am a huge fan of multi-option response systems. I don't think run, hide, fight specifically is appropriate for K-12 schools. Hmm. Um, but the concept or idea bef- behind multi-option response, I am 100% an advocate for. So what's an alternative? What's another, um, what's an alternative? Um, uh, there's a, a, an organization called Alert. They have, um, Uh, deny, avoid, deny, defend. It's just the approach and the way that it's delivered, uh, primarily how do you train students versus training an office staff. That that delivery is much different. That's what we do as an organization. But um, Run, Hide, Fight just has, just the word fight by itself is very emotional for people. Um, So I know it sounds like such a little and petty thing, but it's a huge thing when you're talking to a kindergartner teacher um, who as a person might not you know violence might never be an option for them uh, which is okay but the system was just never meant for k-12 schools so i'm a fan of multi-option response just not run hide fight well words words matter words mean something i I think it's totally reasonable to say hey run hide fight you know has the wrong terminology and leads to the wrong 
reaction. I mean, you know, I think people talk about that on, you know, everywhere on the political spectrum. You know, words matter and they mean something. So what talk, talk about the second the, the 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 one that you like avoid is that what it starts with? Yeah, so it's it, again it's through, through this group called Alert, which is the Advanced Law Enforcement Rapid Response Training. Um, they work, they partner and work with FBI. Um, it's called Avoid, Deny, Defend, and again, it's the same concepts, but even through their training and what they provide, it just they start to get into the science and and how people just naturally respond to. A crisis. It, it's a phenomenal program that's out there. There's some other ones that are out there. Alice is another very known one. Um, I think Alice is a good system, but there's a lot of negative publicity that goes with Alice, so that in and of itself can be a challenge for schools to overcome. And there's a movie out currently called Run, Hide, Fight, which I, I didn't see the entire movie, but I, I read a lot about it. I watched the uh, – they have a kind of an extended trailer out um and uh it it almost seems like a uh, like a horror movie or a thriller like a, like an extreme thriller uh and the 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 context is a uh, a mass murder at a at a school is that is that kind of the gist of it you want you want to talk a little bit about it morgan yeah so the movie's on 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 newsmax so you have to have a subscription to newsmax um which i didn't have but i i went and got just so i could watch the movie and I didn't read or watch anything about the movie prior. I just went in just kind of like a blank slate. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially the movie is, is that there's an active shooter event at a school and a potential victim, which is a female um, student, ends up saving the entire st school and um, stopping the assailant. So what did you think of it? How did, what, what, what did they do right and what did they do wrong? I, honestly, I... I was surprised at the end of the day. It's it's a total 100% Hollywood movie and film. I thought being on Newsmax that they were going to try to make some very clear kind of statements. Um, and at the end of the day, I was I was just extremely disappointed. But there there were some good learning points that were were part of the movie that I thought were kind of indicative of the true phenomenon that we see. And, and the first is that we often see, especially in school shootings, um, what's known as leakage, where an assailant is either directly telling other students that they are going to um, conduct an attack or thinking about an attack, or they display, it, they display some sort of signs um, that they're in a crisis hmm. and that hurting themselves or hurting others is a definite possibility. So in the movie, there's a scene where our hero actually sees one of the assailants out in the middle of a field, like, and what he's actually doing is, is planning a bomb, but her and another student are having a dialogue about how weird that kid is. Um, they talk about one of the students is getting suspended for school or that they wrote specifically in a school um, assignment about hurting other people. And, and those are very true things that happen um, and that are missed opportunities that we have in order to truly prevent these events. Interesting. You know, that was one of the things the uh, the uh, Marjorie Stoneman, uh, I hope I got that the, the name of that school correct, in, in Florida yeah. uh, a few years ago on, on Valentine's Day. One of the things that, that came out afterwards was some of the students at the school were expressing, hey, this kid was weird. You know, from the get-go, this kid was strange, and he was weird, and... Uh, um, it, it seemed like it was fairly common knowledge that this that this uh, this kid was was off. Let, let, I mean, I'm trying not to, you know, use bad or, or inaccurate terminology, but apparently this kid had problems and it was well known. And 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 they it, tried to respond, was, but it was beyond well known. It, there, there's a book out there um, called "Why Meadow Died." It's written by Andrew Pollock. His daughter Meadow was killed and murdered at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Um, he and uh, Max, I forget, his, Max Eden are the authors of this book. It will rip you to your core. You cannot, mm. this, this movie doesn't even touch what happened at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. The amount of failures are insane. Mm. This kid brought ammunition to school. He brought dead animals to school. He brought knives to school. He specifically told students, teachers, um, mental health professionals that he wanted to kill himself, that he wanted to kill others, fascinated with 
Nazis. It was just it doesn't end. Um, all kinds of problems. Prevention has to wow. be the key. Morgan, all kinds of problems. Thank you so much. Is there a website you want people to visit? Um, if you're looking for training in San Diego or Riverside County, you can go to defensive tactics and firearms.com if you're interested in your school or faith based organization. Um, working on some emergency management stuff, you can join us at campus-safety.us. All right, Morgan. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. It's always good talking to you. Thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate it. All right, folks, stay right there. And after the break, we're talking with Justin Baca from Rifle Supply in Huntington Beach right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. This might be the best gun owners segment ever. I'm glad uh, you got to hear what they said. And oh my gosh, Dave Stahl is definitely not a pre-recorded message, but that's not important right now. What is important is that you support the Second Amendment by becoming a member today. So go to sdcgo.org and become a member. Do it, do it. Or check out Orange County Gun Owners, Riverside County Gun Owners, or San Bernardino County Gun Owners. Get some! Seventy. The answer. Clean, lube, and protect your gun faster and easier with Seal One. Seal One CLP Plus is an all-in-one solution that cleans, lubricates, and protects your guns. It's also natural, non-toxic, and environmentally friendly. Seal One was founded by a Navy SEAL here in San Diego, and all their products are made in the USA. Seal One is also a strong supporter of the San Diego County gun owners, so we are very proud to have them on board. Clean your guns faster and better with Seal One. And if you use uh, promo code GOR25 for a 25% discount off your first order on their website at SealOne.com. All right, who's our guest, my friend? SealOne.net. Oh, why do I keep saying that? SealOne.net. That's okay. All I well, do we is have read a couple. It. Melissa's um, got some shout outs. Yeah, I got a couple shout outs for the YouTube. I uh, didn't know if you guys knew this, but we are live right now on YouTube. So hello to. AKs are better and Uli Defense. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, our next guest is Justin from Rifle Supply. Uh, Rifle Supply that's up in uh, Orange County. Justin, are you there? I am here. Yep. Hey, congratulations, man! I heard you guys uh, opened up a new location. Yeah, we just uh, we just opened up this past Monday. We moved from about 500 square feet to about uh, 1,800 square feet. So we have a pretty large showroom now, which makes it pretty awesome for our customers. Nice. What? Uh, so what was yeah. the what was the catalyst for the move? <clears throat> we were kind of there before, and the pandemic and everything that happened kind of just gave it a little bit of a jolt. But um, yeah, we started with uh, we started with three people. I was the third employee, and now we have 15 guys that work for us. Um, and we're just, because our manufacturing is is going up. We're an 07 manufacturer, so we Cerakote, laser engraved, gunsmith. 
sails the whole nine yards, but uh, we were running out of space. So it was just about time to uh, to make the move. That's awesome. Okay, so yeah. if someone goes someone goes to to to, to your shop, what mm-hmm. uh, what what are they going to get? What do you guys specialize in? What are they looking for? Who's your customer? Um, it's pretty much everyone, to be honest with you. Um, That's you know, the we spirit. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah we take pride in having. Um, you know, we have a lot of women that come in, first-time buyers by themselves, um, a lot of things like that. We always joke around because we stay, we, you know, we, we opened a gun store because we hated going into gun stores. Um, <laughs> just, a, just a totally different experience. Everybody's super nice. Customer service is number one, and you don't, get any, uh, you don't need to get any weird attitudes for any bad questions or weird questions or first-time buyers or anything like that. But um, you can do the gambit with, with us. You can do pistol builds we have access to stippling and cuts and we make our own rifle line um we get uh, everything pretty much i mean we have access to direct action group max joseph and those guys so we send a lot of people that way for their training um but it's just a real we got free coffee free water it's just a real homey feel when you walk into the store that that i think that's where our growth has really come from is just the fact that people are comfortable they like to come in they like to hang out and uh they don't get any kind of weird attitude or weird vibe in the shop tell us about your rifle line yeah so we have uh we have complete rifles 16 inch right now um we do have lowers receiver sets and builder sets that are up on the website uh we do have a pretty big website riflespy.com um and our instagram um the other big catalyst for us is uh is our cerakote so we do all in-house seracoding, whatever patterns or anything, and we do that on our rifle line also. So you can come in and you could pick out a full raw set. We have ones that are already pre-made, but you can um, you can pick out whatever color you want. You can pick out your accessories, um, and our rifle lines come with uh, our rifle line comes with like pretty standard 16 inch, 223 Wilder, 556, and uh, it's just a normal G- DI rifle, but um, it's all made in-house, and people are super happy to get something made in California. Uh, made in Huntington Beach, you know, a local area to everybody. Uh, you don't get that very often, so there, it's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice rifle. So that and that, it is very cool. You guys manufacture the thing from from the ground up, right? You're not just talking about. I mean, I'm sure you do some, you know, assembling and whatever. You'll do anything that that folks need, but but one of the things that you guys do that makes you very unique is from the ground up uh, manufacturing of an AR. So so pe- so people can go in and say, hey, here's the AR of my dreams. Um, and they're, they're not just buying something off a wall. They're, they're creating something from scratch, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we, we mill out all the eighties from in our spot, everything like that. Sometimes we get them from forgings. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool because people can come in and they could go, I want this emblem on it, or I want this serial number or anything like that because we're a manufacturer and because we're, we're pretty agile, we can do that. And then it'll just go into dross like it would have to, like any normal gun, but we can custom make guns. They can bribe three made guns. Um, you know, th- there's a, there's really no limit to what they get from us. It's not, I like to like it to a tattoo shop that, that has flash art on the wall and then a custom tattoo shop. We're the custom tattoo shop. You can kind of get what you want there. That's very cool. How long have you guys been around? Yeah. 2016 is when we opened to the public. Um, and, uh, and now we just moved in the new location. So John was doing this a lot, a long time before that. John's the owner. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but that's when we opened the re- retail location, 2016, and it's just been it's been going ever since. So, how was 2020 for you? <laughs> like the same as everybody else says, I'm sure. Um, it was nuts, but you know, the big thing for us is we focused on not gouging, not raising our prices too high. We went to MSRP, not above. Um, we we're really looking to to gather customers for life, not customers for one purchase. And that's the way we look at every customer that walks in. And so um, it's been great for us because the customer acquisition has been massive. Um, you know, I mean, we've 5X, 10X our customer base, and they keep coming back we, because we treated them right. So it was uh, it was incredible. Yeah, as far as money-wise, it was incredible there, too. Well, that's really cool, man. Congratulations. I, I know you and I met at, at the gun show, and yeah, I'm, no always imp- I'm always impressed with uh, – uh, with with the customer service you guys give and and, and your booth is fantastic and uh, and recently you uh, you're donating to Orange County Gun Owners is going to have an auction here in March and you're donating one of your ARs to their auction to help them raise money and I'm very very appreciative of, of that and would ask people that uh, hey if you're listening and you and you you want to buy any kind of gun go down and see people that support organizations like Orange County Gun Owners and I, I just really appreciate everything you guys are doing Justin you guys are doing fantastic yeah thank you. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we, we got to give back. And now 
we're not too small, so we have the ability to do that. And you know, and and we're all in the same in the same spot. If you if you own or work at a gun store or something like that, we can't do any hard marketing or anything. So we have to do the cars and we have to do the giveaways and we have to do all that stuff and supporting everybody that is. Uh, I don't know. We're all on the same team. That's what I like to say. And you guys just got Huntington Beach, right? You're in Huntington. Yeah, yep. You guys just got yeah, a new. Uh, what's that? Uh, we just have Huntington for right now. We will be expanding in the, in the next couple of years. Um, but not quite there yet. We need to get this one all aligned because it's it's huge compared to what we're used to. Well, I can't wait to see the new facility. But you guys just got yeah. a new uh, a new city council member. The Huntington Beach bad boy is now on your, yeah. your city council. What do you think of that? Um, he he held a couple of meets at our uh, at our location. Um, you know he he's good. He's pro two A, um, and he's uh, he's he's pro America and pro the Constitution, and uh, and that's really all we can ask for in, in people that are going to be leading our cities. Our Huntington Beach has always been incredible. People always say, "Oh, it's California. Oh, it's Huntington." They were actually they helped us fill out all the paperwork when we opened, and and they've been great. So it's uh, it's cool that Huntington is uh, is super supportive of the two A community. They don't have. They don't have, we don't get much pushback at all on, on any of the stuff that we do, so it's pretty cool. And we're, we're talking about Tito Ortiz. Tito Ortiz was a MMA champ uh, back in the day. Well, not too really? long ago. Yeah, and he's now on the city council. How Hong cool Kong. is that? And no, his, no one's going to mess with him. No one's going to mess with him. He's no. going to uh, – He uh, his nickname was – he was the Huntington Beach bad boy. Yeah, I know. He's on their Huntington Beach city when council. When you said that, I went, why do I know that name? Well, there's there's kind of – Justin, you've you, – What's that? Say that again. He said he's a super ni- he's a super down to earth nice guy too. You yeah. would never get that vibe other than the fact that he's extremely large. Uh, but <laughs> but other than that, he's super nice. Yeah, he uh, well, there's kind of a special little relationship between MMA and the and the Second Amendment community. It seems like a lot of MMA guys are into into guns. Yeah, but you piss him off, and I bet you'll see the true yeah, Mr. I want, Ortiz. I don't want to find out. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to find if, out. You know what? You're absolutely right because a lot of the UFC. Um, yeah, we actually built did a build for Dana White. Um, if, if anybody looks on our Instagram, oh, you can yeah. scroll down a little bit. There's pictures with us, but, um, yeah, we did a custom build. We're friends with, um, the owner of HB ultimate. I actually grew up with Tiki Goshen. He owns it and, uh, he represents fighters. So we're looking to do some more. We've done, we've done one for Dana, um, and a couple fighters already, but you're right. Like it's not just the big names like Cerrone and those other guys in the UFC that are large. It, they do kind of, uh, they intertwine, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. How did, uh, how did uh, Dana White find you? Um, he actually didn't. So Tiki uh, wanted to go out and see him and said, uh, I want to make a gift for him, and I think we should make it around the Patriots. And so what we did is we custom Cerakoted a full gun. I custom engraved the new old new logo, old logo. I made his serial number every year that the Patriots have won the Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> and, and then we, w- we went out there and, uh, and got to meet him in his office and stuff. And the first thing he said was, go get the social media guy. And our eyes was just lit up. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was a- it was, a, it was a great experience. It was, it was a lot of fun. Man. All right. What's your website, Justin? Uh, just riflesupply.com. And the Instagram is the same thing. The same thing. Just rifle supply. All right. Yep. So go go to rifle supply, buy a gun, come back next month, buy another gun, ask for Justin. <laughs> He'll take care of you. And Justin, sincerely, yep. very much appreciate. Look out for, uh, you're going to see a sample. You might be able to bid on uh, one of Rice, Rifle Supplies ARs on uh, Orange County Gun Owners uh, Auction, which is coming up in March, so stay tuned. We'll announce more about that. But thank you so much, Justin. Appreciate it, brother. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the time, guys. Have a great evening. All right, folks. Hey, are you having trouble figuring out how to help in the fight to keep your gun rights? Well, stick around. Joe's going to talk about things you can do to get involved. So make sure you stay on Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1. AM 1170. The answer. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I've been watching you during the show, and let's just say I can tell you haven't uh, haven't become a member yet. The commercial break isn't even long enough for me to list all the benefits and reasons you absolutely should become a member. So just go to stcgo.org and join. Like, go right now. Join.
get some! So my wife of 25 years just told me that she didn't love me anymore. I didn't say that. I said you couldn't have another gun. Same thing. New Year's diets freaking suck. Hmm. That's what that does. Oh. <laughs> it's you again. I'm glad to see that you uh, stayed this far. I mean, you already came this far. I might as well stay for the end of the show. And at the end of the show, make sure that you click that link. That one of those links down there below. I'm glad you stayed. Jumping for my spring here. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm glad you stuck around. There's a lot of good stuff going on Gun Owners Radio right now. Interviews, facts, Second Amendment news. It's a pretty good start to 2021. Just won't go anywhere. Oh, okay. Nice and dry. Awesome. Go. Streaming now on TuneIn.com and Radio.com. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Welcome back to Hour 2 of Gun Owners Radio with your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Germisi, and Michael Schwartz. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with your questions and comments or to learn how to become a sponsor of the show. Time to get involved and get active. Together, we will win. Now here's Dave, Joe, and Michael on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The Answer. Self-defense and emergencies can happen to anyone, and unfortunately, the justice system may not be on your side. If you have taken training, then you know you should have coverage for the legal battle after your self-defense battle. While you protect your family and property, U.S. Law Shield is here to defend you 24-7, 365 days a year with comprehensive self-defense coverage at an affordable price. Bad guys don't take days off, and neither does our coverage. Guess what? Gun Owners Radio listeners could get a free T-shirt when you join. Just use promo code GUNOWNERSRADIO at uslawshield.com. Hey, and if you're watching us on YouTube, do me a favor. Hit the like button and the subscription button so you don't miss a show. And tell as many friends as you can. Now we got Joe Tremisi, and he's going to talk to us about his daily or weekly blog. Joe, what do you got today? I got uh, the public health crisis, so the latest weapon. We uh, have one? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what we have is um, progressives, I think, have learned quite a bit from the last year with the the COVID-19 and all the stuff that's gone on. 
And I think they've discovered that, ooh, if we could name something a public health crisis, we can do quite a bit here. We can, um, we can suspend laws. We could pay no attention to the Constitution, U.S. or state. Um, we could take rights away from people. We could do pretty much anything we want to do in the name of the public health crisis. And I think we've seen a lot of that. We've seen um, a lot of abuse of, of rights and things like that, a lot of government overreach, uh, particularly by Democrat-type gover governors. Um, if you look at Phil Murphy in New Jersey, I mean, it's, it's terrible in New Jersey. You have Andrew uh, Cuomo in New York, who's being investigated now for his, um, nah. finally, I don't think anything will come of it, but at nah. least somebody's uh, looking at his, um, the way he handled nursing homes and then how they covered that up afterwards. And um, even out here, or especially out here with our hopefully soon to be recalled uh, Gavin Newsom, uh, just a lot of abuse of rights and a lot of abuse of people and disregard for, for people's welfare out here, all in the name of um, all in the name of the public health crisis. And yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep going, Joe. Yeah, I shouldn't be welcome to you guys. Um, so. Um, the uh, one of the things they they've um, come up with is again if you can with um, a public health crisis for instance this stuff is going to be turned on uh, gun owners now for uh, you know looking at um, looking at the so-called gun violence which is just a made-up political term anyway but mm, um, right. but calling gun violence a public health crisis now enables them to do a lot of stuff with it and if you look at uh, Joe Biden's or President Biden's um, latest uh nominee for attorney or for um for surgeon general is um vivek uh, murthy i think is uh, actually obama's former uh surgeon general mm. but he's a big advocate of treating uh gun violence as a public health crisis and if they're able to do that it um it frees up a lot of uh, things there's a lot of stuff they can do they can ignore basically a lot of things and I think they've discovered that, and I think that's the next uh, big thing we see coming at us uh, in terms of attacks on the Second Amendment. Because we've got uh, Joe Biden is um, also reportedly thinking about declaring a, or at least considering, declaring a national emergency over um, gun violence again. And uh, none of this is supported by facts or anything like that. But once you call it an emergency, now there's a lot of stuff that they can do, a lot of things they get to ignore. And all of this stuff is fear-based, and I think that was one of the big lessons learned with the COVID crisis. It's, um, you know, if you can scare people enough, they'll accept lots of things. And this is not new for the Democrats. Um, you know, they've been doing this since, uh, at least since the Civil War, since their inception, really. And uh, I just read a book, it was called, um, what was it called? It was called Negroes and the, uh, and the Firearms Tradition. And it was written by a black guy recently, and it covers um, the history from what black people in this country went through from about the Civil War through Reconstruction and all the way up to the present. And, you know, when you read about something like that, I mean, yeah, everybody knows about slavery and that kind of stuff. But when you read what actually happened, because it's filled with just story after story after story of real stuff mm -hmm. that happened to real people and, you know, how firearms played a real part in them being able to defend themselves – and if you look at this, the Democratic Party was on the wrong side of that from way back then all the way up to now with what they called the Black Codes, uh, with Jim Crow laws, with the um, May issue uh, gun, gun laws that we still see here in uh, California. And all of them intended to, um, to keep black people from being able to defend themselves and all of it based on fear. Yeah. So, you know, the, using fear is nothing different or new. What's new is the, I think the, um, the public health crisis approach to it. Well, it is because we, 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 they just, we just had an incident that was called a public health. You know, if you think, well, gee, even if they call it a public health crisis, it's still a right, so they can't take it away. Really? Because we just spent a year where they told you you can't work, you can't leave your house, you can't travel, you can't worship, <laughs> you can't assemble. That's right, and uh, and the American people accept it. Uh, you know, you still see this thing with these masks. I mean, my goodness, how much do you have to learn that they don't do anything? And now they're doubling up on them. People are still walking around with them. Right. And, I mean, but it's it's fear-based stuff. And and that's why, you know, the public health crisis thing, that's why I was so upset with a, a certain um, supervisor out here for, um, you know, a little while ago, Nathan Fletcher proposed uh, at the um, 
at the board level there that they have a resolution um, calling uh, racism a uh, public health crisis in San Diego County. Now, any clear-thinking, rational adult knows that racism is not a public health crisis in San Diego County, but the resolution passed five to zero, and you know, two Republican supervisors supported this. And what's so dangerous and what's so infuriating about this is, you know, when you support something that that's obviously just a blatant lie, it's just a blatant political tool, just meant to. Um, to really divide San Diegans, really. Mm. And um, when you go ahead and vote for something like that and support it, then you're just moving that agenda forward. And the reasoning for supporting it, um, you know, and I haven't talked to this uh, supervisor. I will at some point. But, um, you know, someone who's very protective of uh, the supervisor, who I didn't name in the article, but um, was saying that, well, what's he supposed to do? If he, if he stands up and votes against it, uh, they'll call him a racist. Well, yes, you're, you're an old white guy, you're a Republican. Of course they're going to call you a racist. If you're afraid of that kind of stuff, you know, you're not going to be helpful. If you're not going to stand up um, just because of that, then that's going to be a problem. And that's, that's kind of the thing that, that's really upsetting. When, um, you know, if, if a uh, Second Amendment issue comes up, if we have a, a shooting or the next time we have a shooting, and there's a big call to... Uh, you know, to end concealed carry or to do this or to do that. Um, if these people are going to stand up to this, um, they're going to be called all sorts of names and all sorts of things. So, you know, it's the same kind of thing, and that's why I say it's kind of dangerous. The, um, the public health crisis thing or the racism thing, um, just how dangerous that is. I was just reading today in uh, Boston. The city schools in Boston um, have decided that they're no longer – going to offer advanced placement uh, classes for, I think it was fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And the reason being that there were too many white kids and Asian kids enrolled in the classes, so they were going to stop them. And that's the kind of damage you do when you support this kind of stuff. And that, that's why I was really upset about that stuff. So, you know, the way you deal with this and the way you address this, and I, and I say this to Democrats and Republicans alike, um, you know, with the Democratic Party, that, that party's been hijacked by lunatics that, that pretty much hate the country. And if you're a Democrat, you know, get involved. Vote these people out. Vote good men and women into your party and take your party back. And the same thing with Republicans. You know, we have a lot of, um, unfortunately, swamp-type Republicans in there now uh, that aren't fighting, that aren't doing what they should do. Vote them out. Put um, good men and women back in there. Um, the government's supposed to be ours. It belongs to the people. So take it back. So that was kind of the gist of it uh, this week. Left you all speechless, huh? <laughs> what more can you say? All right, buddy. That was awesome. Hey, folks. Uh, again, thanks, Joe. And check out all of Joe's articles on the blog section of Orange County, San Diego County, Riverside County, and San Bernardino County, San Bernardino County's website. Sorry about that. And don't touch that dial. We will be right back with more Gun Owners Radio right after this. This is FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Do you want gun rights? Are you tired of stupid gun laws? Do you want to own the guns the rest of the country gets to own? Me too. So you know what I did? I became a member and I got involved. Join and they will help you figure out which politicians to support, how to get ACCW, and what you can do to be effective. Seriously, it is the most important and most effective $10 you're going to spend all month. Go to sdcgo.org and join.
right, folks. Hey, welcome back. You are listening to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. PRMI Mortgage, slash Alpine. Are you in the military looking for help for a VA loan? Well, if you're looking to buy or refi, or if you're considering reverse mortgage, call our local mortgage guy that you can trust. Call Chris Wiley at PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. Give Chris a call at 619-722-1303 or just go to primerez.com slash alpine. Hey, Mike, have we got a winner? Yes, we do. Our winner is... Who's our winner? (laughs) It would be... Who's our winner? <laughs> we'll come back to that one. Yeah. Our winner will be announced at the end of this segment. That's right. So don't touch that dial right now. We got a gear review by Melissa Lee, Tack Rig, and that will be with Tim Silva. Tell us all about it, Melissa. First, I want to do a shout out, a uh, YouTube shout out for um, our watchers, Dave and Phil from Ronan Martial Arts. They are consistently watching me for these gear reviews. Uh, every other week when I'm on. So thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Um, So today, special, special um, rig here for people who carry um, a gun. This is TAC Rig. TAC Rig is an innovative modular holster system that allows you to safely and quickly (coughs) snap on and off multi-platform shells. It's it's a pretty cool system. And the owner here, Tim Silver, he's with me to talk about this. Tim, are you there? Hey, Melissa. Yes, I'm here. Good. Thank you for joining me. Um, So, first of all, um, what's your background on guns, prior military and law enforcement? You know, how did you come Uh, about this? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Thank you, Gunners Radio. I appreciate the the time and the publicity. Um, So, my background is a bit different than probably you would expect. No um, background in law enforcement or military. I actually come from a pretty different background with uh, more like in the tech and engineering manufacturing industry. Um, always been around guns, always loved them. Um, I'm a gun collector, FFL instructor, stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's definitely different than what you would expect for a guy that, you know, came out with a, a you know, something different in this industry. But, <laughs> I, yeah, I want uh, to um, show everybody at home what we're, what we're talking about. So here, let me show the camera. I have a blue gun, and this is a Glock 19. And here's your outer shell. Here's the backing. And it's nice and flexible. You guys see that? See how flexible this is? So, this modular system allows you to snap on and off a different holster for a different gun whenever you want. So, here we go. I'm going to lift up these buttons, and it's off. Oh, wow. I can take my shield now in its own holster and put it on here lift up the little buttons press them down hmm. and bam i've never seen buttons work like that that's cool so it snaps on and off super easily oh. look at this safety issue a lot of the time is that glocks or not glocks but holsters don't have a trigger guard in the back this one does it's completely covered in the oh, trigger guard in the back. I got you. Yeah. So not only in the front, I see. but also in the back. So that's a big safety issue. So also, let me show you this. It could also be, this is inside the waistband. This could be outside the waistband. When we clip on, oh. belt buckles. Did you have an erector set when you were growing up? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, this is so I cool. did. Yeah. So <laughs> instantly, belt buckles. Super fast, super easy. Yeah. And I was asking him, can I put this in the safe? Can I put this in the car if I had these little rivets? Yes, you can. Mm. Yes, you can. So you can just safely, without having to unholster your gun or pull it out, you can put, put this and snap it in your car. If you had the little rivets to go in there, you can safely put it in your gun safe, like on the door of the gun safe. So this thing, 
I've never seen anything like this before. This it's very is, cool. This is so, pretty cool. You know who talks about the trigger guard in the back is John Korea talks about that. Speaking of which, tell us, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, so you know, a couple of years ago, I I was looking for a system like this. You know, just as a a gun collector, I have you know uh, quite a few handguns I like to carry, and so in my research, um, I, w- I was looking and looking, and I never found a system that really fit what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to carry in and out of waistband. I wanted the gun to be able to stay in the sheath. I wanted to be able to move it to different applications. Uh, we're coming out with about 40 different applications that this holster snaps to. And so it's the, the system is, you know, the sky's the limit. We can just, we can make this thing adapter snap to pretty much anything. And uh, in my research, I decided to take a crack at designing my own holster. And uh, eventually I came across a video by John Korea mm. and he was pretty much my influence here. And, um, I, I literally took one of his videos on, he had like the box of shame of holsters that he had thrown in, you know, holsters he had bought throughout the year. And every gun owner that carries a gun, they know exactly what we're talking about right now. Cause I've got a, a box of holsters in my office too, that I can't use for one reason or another. They're super uncomfortable or they're unsafe or they fail in some way, you know, my list. And uh, he, he basically outlined what makes a, um, an acceptable holster. I think it was trigger guard, completely covered front and rear, um, gun held securely, and access uh, to the gun reliably. Hmm. And I used his list and, and a couple other guys that I trust, and I, I literally made this holster based on those checkpoints, th- that list. Um, so, you know, that, that's where we started with the foundation and the safety and the functionality, and then eventually kind of branched out into the in waistband, out of waistband, and figured out how to, you know, f- figure out a, a, a universal hole pattern that basically fits any semi-auto on the market. And we plan to carry them all, um, all within the same holster. So. That's right. You're, I think you're, are you coming down? Is he? Yeah. Am I stealing your I'm thunder? Hope, yes, I'm hoping okay, that right. he's coming down I'll, so that I'll he sit can patiently. present uh, John I Freya am. with one of his own holsters. You're coming down to join us at uh, for our, our Gun Owners Radio event, the Cover Your Asp Week. You're going to come down for the... Uh, the the uh, happy hour right i will be there awesome yeah. yay Absolutely. this is a cool system this is a really cool system yeah. this backer is it got holes in it and i like that it's breathable mm. and this yeah. is not kydex folks this is something that's superior to kydex this is actually called bolteron and can you tell us the difference between kydex and bolteron oh putting me on a spot spot on that one um <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> um so do, without getting really really technical um i do encourage people to just google it because when you google it you will you will see you, you'll read the difference between kydex bolt run honestly hands down you're going to go with a bolt shell um but real quickly um so you know you leave a gun in a in a car um it gets too hot it will actually lose its or, sorry not the gun if you leave a holster in a, a kydex holster in a in a car and it gets too hot it'll actually lose its retention It'll start to deform. It'll it'll lose shape over time. It also tears. Um, John actually outlines one in the video where he had actually torn the gun in a hand to hand combat thing, uh, torn the holster. Sorry, and um, and it also doesn't do well with um, extreme cold. Well, Bolteron's a mil spec um, thermoform plastic, and it has much higher and lower you know heat and cold resistance. Um, it's much stronger. Um, it's, it's just all around absolutely a better product. And I know that's going to, you know, that's a touchy subject for like everybody that's got a Kydex holster, but Hey, it is what it is. It's a cooler name so. too. Volteron. Volteron, yeah. <laughs> it's also, I will mention this, it's hundred percent USA made and I love that. Mm. So. Um, yeah, I, I've actually had, um, my Kydex holster in the car and then it warped on me mm-hmm. once and then I had to there get you it go. fixed. Perfect. Perfect example. Yep. yep, I've had to get it fixed. So, can I can, can I ask a question? Um, so, do you, you you buy the chassis separately, and then you buy various holsters that that fit your whatever your firearm in? Is that the idea? Yes. So each one is obviously molded individually for that firearm. We do our own molds. We don't buy the off the shelf molds that everybody's buying. We develop our own molds in house. We high we hold really really high tolerances and and you know to the thousandth of an inch on these firearms. Um, so each, each, uh, shell is molded individually for each firearm. And then you can buy like a package, you know, you buy the in out of waistband package with a shell, um, or you can buy just out of waistband, just in waistband, and you can buy the, 
the shells by themselves as you expand the system. So Interesting. it's really, you know, once you get into the system, it's completely modular. It's kind of based on, you know, like why we like AR-15s is because everybody can customize them however they want. They can add on as they go, whatever. Um, that's, you know, kind of the same premise here is that you can just keep adding to, it's kind of future-proofing your holster investment, honestly. Hey, so, hey Tim, well, excuse me, What what's the warranty on this product? So 100% will stand behind it, whatever it is. We'll either fix it or we'll replace it or we'll return it for you. Um, we believe in it 100%. I don't that's, think that's awesome. um, it's going to be a major problem. Yeah. Well, I think Michael's got to love that that instantaneous switch from inside the waistband to outside the waistband to accommodate your um, your complete wardrobe that That's right. uh, you switch around. That's right. Time. You never know. You know, sometimes I am fancy. <laughs> Are you fashion conscious over there? I can't wait for the was, drop like uh, holster. The drop like holster is coming, so I'm hoping to get my hands on one of those. It is. It is. Uh, it was a big thing for me. I've got uh, little kids. We're always running out the door to something, right? And I, uh, I would carry a different gun on Sunday to church than I would during the week, you know, wearing a T-shirt. So I needed to be able to switch up not only the gun, but maybe in and out of waistband, depending on what my job was for the day. I'm running security at my church. I'm probably going to carry out of waistband. Um, it, it's just I, I wanted that flexibility, and I thought, hey, there's got to be a way to do this. And there's a lot more stuff in the works. Um, uh, as you get into the system, there will be stuff released. Uh, almost on a weekly basis. It's crazy how much stuff we've got in the works right now. I respect so. the guy that has a church gun. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yes, retention's sir. great on this too. Yep. Yeah. You, you, everything snaps in. So, Tim, what's the website? Uh, tacrig.com. T A C R I G.com. Very simple. And we have um, a giveaway. So, anybody who wants to enter this giveaway for their very own holster, you can go to gunownersradio.com and sign up for our email. And in two weeks, I will announce a winner. Sweet. Um, we also have a discount code. Thank you so much. It's G-O-R-15 to save 15%. So thank you so much, Tim, for joining us. And thank you for the giveaway and the discount. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. Back to your rector set. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, folks, check out our website to see our Magnum interview by going to gunownersradio.com slash Magnum. The last one was with Kung Lee, a championship MMA fighter that's a firearms trainer now. This is Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. This might be the best gun owners segment ever. I'm glad uh, you got to hear what they said. And oh my gosh, Dave Stahl. It's definitely not a pre recorded message, but that's not important right now. What is important is that you support the Second Amendment by becoming a member today. So go to sdcgo.org and become a member. Do it. Do it. Or check out Orange County Gun Owners, Riverside County Gun Owners, or San Bernardino County Gun Owners. <laughs> Get some! <laughs> so my wife of 25 years just told me that she didn't love me anymore. I didn't say that. I said you couldn't have another gun. Same thing.
folks. Welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, FM 961, AM 1170. The answer. Hey, Blackhound Optics is now a 10 ring partner. Congratulations. Accurate, affordable, guaranteed. Sporting optics that go the distance. Backed by customer service that goes that extra mile. You might remember when Joe reviewed some of their scopes. Great guys, great products, and a great company that is making optics affordable. On top of quality optics, they pay close attention to the customer's experience. Did you know their scopes come with mounts? So you don't have to worry about finding out a one that fits. We are so excited to have them on as an official partner of the show and for them and ask for them at your local gun store or find them online at blackhoundoptics.com. All right. So I guess, Melissa, you're going to discuss about us. We'll, sp- we'll talk about the article that you that you came up with. Yeah, uh, okay. A spike in violence against Asian um, Americans. Right. So I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but across the country there's been a rise in hate crimes targeting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and especially to our elders. Why so, is that? That's a good question. So we're going to talk about that. But, yeah. for example, like crimes of like an 84-year-old Thai man was pushed down to the ground so hard the victim hit his head on the pavement and died. A 91-year-old man was shoved to the ground and broke his hip. A 61-year-old Filipino man in New York City was um, slashed across his face. A woman in her 90s in Minnesota was slapped and knocked to the ground and repeatedly kicked in the face. Um, There's a Chinese man um, got his teeth knocked out, suffered brain hemorrhaging after random attacks in New York City. So there's been a lot. People the common had, denominator seems like they're picking on the oldest people they can find. No, it's it's like it's all ages, but a lot of them are are elderly, and That's I think what I'm that it, it's be, I I think it's because they don't fight back. So there's this uh, there's this group. It's the Asian American Studies Center. Oh, actually, uh, let's see. It's called the Stop Asian American Pacific Islander Hate website, the AAPI, um, and they said that in the in 2020. They had over 3,000 uh, uh, crimes against um, uh, Asian Americans reported just to them, just in the year 2020. Women are attacked about two and a half times more often than men. 43% uh, reported were in California. So this is a national website, uh, you know, and of these 3,000, 43% were just in California, which, you know, we have a big population, but still disproportionate. Um, and the reports included, now when we ask, like, well, what does it mean? What's a... What's being reported? What's the actual incident? It include being barred from an establishment, uh, being spat upon, verbal harassment, or physical assault. And it's it's uh, actually AB eighty five, which is uh, a pandemic budget bill passed uh, signed into law by Gavin Newsom, actually included one point four million dollars earmarked for researchers at the Asian American Studies Center in the University of uh, UCLA and and the stop. Uh, Asian American Pacific Islander hate website. So this is, it's something that's fairly. It seems like it's it's it, it it's it's happening. It's a real is it thing because of the pandemic. I so believe so. I we're believe blaming these, people this. are angry that they've lost jobs. They're locked down. They can't do anything. They got to wear a mask and, and people call fault. it the and China they, virus. And they so. should be angry at their government, right? <laughs> but Asians. then they then they, because of out out of ignorance. They blame Asian people. They're redirecting their anger. Go to the people that are doing it. Let me give you Governor Newsom's phone number. So we. Okay. I was going to say another thing too is um, is Asians as a group, unfortunately, are very successful in this country. Um, So maybe they're too close to white people, like in the Boston school district, for instance. You know, they're going to they're or they are going to discontinue. Um, some advanced uh, placement classes because there's too many white kids and Asian kids enrolled in them. So, you know, that could be part of it as well. Um, I know Asians, I think, as a group, um, their average income is higher, actually, than than white people as a group. So very successful group in our country. So we just did a a panel discussion that's going to come out on Gun Owners Radio Magnum with uh, a, a, a gentleman who's a professor a gentleman who's law enforcement, and then Wendy from San Diego County Gun Owners, Karen from Riverside County Gun Owners, to discuss this. One thing I found out doing research and through the conversation was that, yes, there was definitely a spike that was COVID-related. You know, people were taking out their frustrations on anybody that was, that you know, even possibly was Asian. 
But there was another interesting thing uh, that came out uh, during the research and the discussion that it's really been ramping up over the last few years. Um, and I guess a lot of Asian American immig- or immigrated immigrated from uh, countries, you know, that fell apart due to communism. And Socialism. One of the, yeah, and one of the things they did is they took over the banks, you know, so they lost all their money. Yep. So I guess it's common with, uh, uh, you know, Asian immigrants, especially ones that are, you know, recently um, to America, that they don't really trust banks. They keep a lot of cash at home. They keep a lot of precious metals at home. Yep. And that message has gotten into career criminals. You know, they know that now. And they're, it's one of the, the, the professor that we, uh, that we spoke with, uh, Raymond, fantastic, fantastic, really smart guy, actually had some, some rap lyrics where they're talking about, you know, how like, hey, you know, if I want something, I'm just going to go make, a, a, make an Asian bleed and, and steal, you know, whatever, cash or, wow. or precious metal. So it's not even, this isn't even subtle you know anymore um so it's tough to tell exactly well you know how much of this is that and how much of this is is covid but the important thing is is it it appears to be a real thing and happening you know and people accurate or not about you specifically um if your community tends to keep a lot of cash on them or in their home that makes you a target yeah and it doesn't have to be accurate about you specifically right it's just if criminals have that impression they have that that understanding or that that theory that that you carry, um, you know, a lot of money or valuables or things just because you're Asian, that that would be enough. Well, does the Asian community are they a large community of concealed carries? Not not, not nearly enough. enough. <laughs> not nearly enough. But you know what? Ever since this has been going on, is that it's there's been up. a ton of Asian Americans going to gun shops and buying up all the guns. Well, sure. You know, because of this, they want to protect themselves. So it's important that when they get good training, you know. They find, you know, especially the women, you know, if you need training, reach out to somebody who's a professional, like seek training and hashtag not me SD. Right. It's like San Diego has not me SD. There's going to be Riverside as well. So we want to support. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what your color of your skin is. Just we want to support everybody who is um, going to arm themselves with the firearm. And I retaliate against China, China, I still buy anything from China. Right. Instead I, of, oh, you don't go attacking people? No. No? I just don't buy anything from China. <laughs> Even if I need it and I want it, I'm not going to buy it because that's my only way of getting back. So your unhappiness is focused at their government where it should be as well, opposed to just uh, I, maybe Asian I, Americans some, Yeah, some random American who's just trying <laughs> to make I just don't get way. it. Maybe I was dropped when I was a child, but, you know. Well... But look at look back in the day when we put all the Chinese or Japanese in in in, in in encampments, and for what reason? I mean, it's just. And well, it's, we didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, we did. Democrats did. I mean, that's well, right. <laughs> based, based, that's true. That's based true. on fear, you and I didn't <laughs> Again, do that. As always, based on fear. <laughs> golly, that just. It is amazing. It was very sad. I was looking through the. Uh, uh, I was looking through the. Uh, um, uh, organization and uh, or I'm sorry I was looking through the research and some of these stories were were just you know um, horrendous horribly sad yeah and there was actually someone in San Mateo a uh, little girl I think she was like eight years old who did a rally over the weekend in San Mateo which is uh, you know just south of San Francisco um, to try to raise awareness and support what so happened? Uh, well she got a good really good oh uh, she didn't get beat up yeah no she we got a really good response and, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I think that's a positive step and raising awareness is certainly a good. There was another complaint on this panel discussion that we had is why aren't we hearing more? Have you guys, yes. so Joe and, and, and Dave, have you heard of, have you heard this before? No. It's yeah. not on mainstream media. It's not. I think it's because like, and, and do who, Asians not count? And, and I don't know. And who are the people doing this? Who, who are the people attack? I mean, do they, is it a, is it an ethnic group of people that are attacking um, all, these Asians, or is it all white guys? Is no, it all I, black I, guys? I would I would say that um, from the news reports, what a lot of get. them are African Americans that are doing this to um, Asians. Not because well, they're I just going for the weak. That's what they're doing. They just it's easy to right. take on a weak person. I mean, regardless of who's attacking them, they shouldn't be attacked at all. Well, no, of course you know? not. But I'm just you know I I mean I can't believe that I haven't seen or heard this in the media. It's because mainstream media isn't reporting it. Um, but there are um, 
you know, influencers on Instagram like Rooftop Asians, Asian Rise, Dion Lim TV. She's an Asian female reporter from ABC7 in San Francisco, um, Asian Gun Society and Neck Shark. Those accounts, they're reporting it. They're tagging all the mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC. No, we're getting, we're starting to get the, this message out there. And y'all actually see bits and pieces of it out there, but it's not talked about as much as everything else. Amazing. I'm going to be stressed after this show's over. Hey, up next, we have Sam the Gun. This is what puts a smile on my face. Sam the Gunman on Stump My Nephew. And another mic drop, but you can't hear it is if you don't listen. So stay tuned to FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. This might be the best gun owners segment ever. I'm glad uh, you got to hear what they said. And oh my gosh, Dave Stahl. It's definitely not a pre-recorded message, but that's not important right now. What is important is that you support the Second Amendment by becoming a member today. So go to sdcgo.org and become a member. Do it. Do it. Or check out Orange County Gun Owners, Riverside County Gun Owners, or San Bernardino County Gun Owners. dot com and radio dot com. All right, folks, welcome back to FM 961 AM 1170 Gun Owners Radio. The answer. Thought I'd twist it up there. Yeah. Hey, our show really needs your help after we just took the break. Uh, we live in a state where your self-defense rights are e quickly eroding. Let us be your voice to help defend you, restore your Second Amendment, and help spread the word about the fight. There's two easy things you can do to, to do. Spotify, Parlor, and the podcast in whatever way you like to listen to the show. Share the show with as many friends as you can. And thanks for tuning in. Remember, today we will win. Like and subscribe uh, to the show on YouTube, Facebook. I don't know what that S means. Spotify? It's just sizzle. Oh, it's sizzle. sizzle. All right. Hey, our favorite show is on right now. The segment is, how you doing, Sam? I'm well. How are you guys? Just living the dream. Speaking of sizzle. Yep. Yeah. Who's going to? So Sam gonna... is, uh, stump my nephew. Uh, Sam, Sam is my nephew. And uh, Sam the gunman. And every week somebody writes in and uh, sends us a little bit of gun trivia. And if we use your question, you get a hat or a t-shirt whatever you like if we if you stump my nephew then you get a uh, front site membership so without further ado melissa hi sam hi how are you good how are you i'm uh i'm handling it that's good <laughs> <laughs> so leanne in san diego Te texas I think it's just are san you all diego. trying to mess me up it's san an diego, actual texas? city i had to look it up no, it's, it's next to corpus city. christi For real? Yeah. san diego texas. okay i thought you just guys were just trying to make well everybody's dumb. leaving Listen. san diego so they had to make a city 
So yeah. they'd be comfortable. We're okay. professional radio people. We don't just make things up. Yeah, that's exactly uh, you, right. I don't believe that one bit. He, so no, anyways. I certainly don't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> so Leanne in San Diego, Texas. Texas. Um, her question is, Glock has an unsupported chamber. What is that and why? Thanks very much for writing in, Leanne. Um, now, this is a really technical question, uh, which are some of my favorites. <laughs> Um, in, uh, in, in the design of firearms broadly and uh, m- specifically self-loading handguns, um, you sometimes have what's called an unsupported chamber, which means basically that part of the back of the cartridge is not fully contained within the walls of the chamber and the breech face. Um, usually in a pistol, it's because the feed ramp is there. And so if you're using particularly high-pressure ammunition um, with a pistol that hasn't been quite designed to handle that pressure and has a partially unsupported chamber, um, then you can sometimes run into issues. Usually this isn't a problem, but um, sometimes with extra hot loads it can be. Uh, Like some people might uh, remember the Glock nade meme, um, which comes from early 40 caliber Glocks that were essentially just 9 millimeter models converted to 40. Um, and that, that higher pressure cartridge in an unsupported chamber um, could sometimes lead to uh, kabooms. You know, that's close, but she actually says that an unsupported chamber is a chamber whose baby daddy doesn't pay his support every month. So I apologize. You didn't get it right. This, I'm just kidding. What? Perfect. Um, awesome I'll job. To your, so- uh, I'll defer to your knowledge. So basically, uh, the uh, the cartridge doesn't quite fit tightly in in the uh, in the uh, in the chamber, right? Is that kind of kind of the gist of it? Yeah, that's the gist of it. And what does that do? What does that it, it, it with the Glock? It, it makes it more reliable, right? Um, no, not necessarily. Unlike most, um, well, every almost every design feature of the Glock, um, it's it's essentially something like. It, it makes the action technically weaker, but it it normally isn't a big problem because most handgun cartridges don't really operate at very high pressures. If if you had um, if you didn't have a fully supported chamber in, in something like um, a thirty odd six, then yeah, that would be a, a, a huge problem. But um, the lack of a fully supported chamber doesn't really become an issue in handguns until you start moving into um, high pressure cartridges, really high pressure handgun cartridges, especially um, like plus P, plus P plus, and uh, certain hand loads that are well beyond the SAMI or CIP spec. But they make it unsupported because is, that, is, is it to help help with extraction or what? I, now I I don't know exactly why they do it. I'm sure there's a good reason because engineers don't do something unless there's a reason for it. Um, whether it's a good reason or not, uh, of course, I can't say. But it, it, it might have something to do with uh, part clearances, and it, it might have something to do with wanting to prevent um, an overly tight clearance from causing issues when the gun is fouled. But again, I really can't say for sure. You'd have to talk to someone who actually designed a pistol for them to be able to uh, tell you that. All right, my friend. How do you know this? Where did this come up in your you daily life? You ask him that every single I, I week. I just don't understand. He's like, you know. You just pick it up here and there. Just pick it By up. By the way, um, before uh, before all the 1911 shooters out there uh, begin criticizing Glocks for having partially unsupported chambers, mm-hmm. um, your 1911 doesn't have a fully supported chamber either. So, uh, oh, burn. Got him. <laughs> If I had an air horn sound effect on me. Running um, in your uh, face, Uncle 1911. Joe's plus P, plus, plus, uh, super hot uh, deer grenade loads or whatever. Cool. All right, my friend. You're the best. Excellent job, Sam. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, and thanks for having me on, as always. Ah, we love having you on. You're the best. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. This week's mic drop. Mic drop. Today's mic drop is about a former politician rather than a current, but it is worth it because she's not yet out of the game. You may remember Barbara Bree as the San Diego City Council member who represented La Jolla for a few years. Yes, there was more in her district than La Jolla, but let's be honest, she represented La Jolla and the rest be damned. But pandering to rich donors is fodder for another mic drop, not today's. 
Over the weekend, Barbara Bree, following up on her total failure as a mayoral campaign, uh, she announced the recall effort of her former city council colleague, Dr. Jen Campbell. Dr. Jen, as you may remember, was just mic dropped a few weeks ago. She's the extremely strange president of the San Diego City Council who regularly makes strange claims using strange false information. For example, we played a clip of her claiming that COVID-19 is the most dangerous virus in medical history. She's cuckoo and faces a real recall effort, not from her Republican opponents. Remember, Republicans don't do things like do things. No, Democrat Jen Campbell is being recalled by her fellow Democrats. So this is good. We want this. Jen Campbell is anti-gun, uh, so get her out of office. If you're listening to this, get involved in the recall and let's help. Their website is recalljen.com. That's R-E-C-A-L-L-J-E-N.com. And help. Helping is uh, true activism. But I know what you're thinking. Mike, if you like the recall and Barbara Bree is leading it, why are you bashing Barbara Bree? Well, the simple answer is that she deserves it. More specifically, I do support the recall, and I am glad Bree is doing it. However, Bree is criticizing Campbell for, quote, not being honest and being under the control of special interests. Well, Pot, meet Kettle. Um, back in 2017, I met with Barbara Bree to talk about the issues gun owners face and the violations of our civil rights that we deal with every day. Barbara Bree appeared interested and sympathetic. Uh, she assured me that she's not anti-Second Amendment and liked the idea of our sensible approach and our educational programs. I explained the details on the California's safe pistol roster law and how it's no, no more than uh, simply a de facto slow-moving ban on handguns in California. She even rolled her eyes at how ridiculous the law is and told me that as a former business owner, she understood how bad the safe handgun roster is to businesses and consumers. She took notes. She thanked me for my time and dedication and for being nonpartisan. Her staffer even took my card because he wanted help buying a gun. She assured me that we'd meet again to try and tackle the problem together. I'm still waiting. The next interaction I had with Bree was just months later when she voted against a proclamation from the city of San Diego recognizing San Diego County gun owners for the educational programs we do, the exact same educational programs Bree thanked us for doing. What makes her behavior more bizarre? She actually signed the proclamation. It's framed. It's hanging on my wall today. She signed it, but then voted against it after she signed it because, you guessed it, special interests. So, yes, get involved in the recall of Jen Campbell, and it's good that Barbara Bree is taking a leadership role, but don't believe a word Bree says and know that she's as two-faced as she claims others to be. She lied to us about wanting to help and being pro-Second Amendment and then folded like a cheap suit to special interests when it was time to honor our organization for the educational programs we sponsor that Bree said she liked. In the wise and immortal words of Carl Jung, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do, Barbara. Finish your recall, then go enjoy retirement. You are someone who should never be anywhere close to power or leadership ever again. That is your weekly mic drop. Mic drop. Very good as usual. Thank you very much. I By spoke the way, all I like the words that. correctly. And if you're listening on YouTube or on the podcast, hit that like button and subscribe and share this show with all your friends. And please support all of our great sponsors, San Diego County Gun Owners, U.S. Law Shield, the Dillon Law Group, Seal One, PRMI Mortgage, Blackhound Optics, and the National Concealed Carry Association. And if you've been watching us on Facebook and we went dark for a slight moment, that was not at our end. We will fill you in more once we find out more. But please join us and enjoy the show. You can also go to gunownersradio.com uh, for all of our shows. They'll be up there. You can listen to them. Uh, we do podcasting. I mean, we are really rocking and rolling, and we can't thank you folks, the listeners, enough. And I really want to thank Michael Schwartz, Joe Germisi, uh, uh, Melissa Lee, Sam the Gunman, What's and our name? digital What's master. Name? What'd I say? I you got saying, it. What's your name? I got it. <laughs> Louise is over here. And, of course, you see, he messed up Brendan's whole thing. Now he's all bummed because he didn't get his, his accolades. And go to gunownersradio.com. Again, like I said, for the podcast and the latest information. And don't touch that dial. Bob Siegel is in the house. 
and I just looked into the booth, his hair is on fire. <laughs> you are going to love this show right here on FM 961, AM 1170, The Answer.